Hey there, in this video, we're going to be comparing these two numbers in two ways in order to figure out which one is the greater one. So in the first method, we're going to use a special limit. And in the second method, we're going to use a function and calculus for comparing these two numbers. And at the end of the video, I'm going to share a general rule for comparing the numbers in these forms. So make sure to watch the whole video. Now, one way to compare two numbers is to take a look at their ratio. Let's say we want to compare A with B. So we can say that if A divided by B is greater than 1, we can conclude that A is greater than B. Otherwise, if A divided by B is less than 1, we can say that A is less than B. So in the first method, what I want to do is to take a look at the ratio of our numbers and see if it is greater than 1 or it is less than 1. So let's go ahead and divide the second number, which is 11 to the power of 10, by the first number, which is 10 to the power of 11. Next, let's go ahead and replace 10 to the power of 11 with 10 to the power of 10 times 10. Because by doing that, we're going to have the same power both in the top and in the bottom. So this is equal to 11 to the power of 10 divided by 10 to the power of 10 times 1 over 10, which equals 11 over 10 to the power of 10 times 1 tenth. Next, let's go ahead and replace 11 with 10 plus 1. And then let's break this fraction into two fractions to have 1 plus 1 over 10 all to the power of 10 times 1 over 10. Next, let's go in and talk about the special limit, which states that limit of 1 plus 1 over n to the power of n as n approaches to positive infinity equals e. Now remember that our ratio was 11 to the power of 10 divided by 10 to the power of 11, which was equal to 1 plus 1 over 10 to the power of 10 times 1 over 10. Now, it is obvious that this number is in the form of this. And it is obvious that 10 is less than positive infinity. Therefore, this part is less than e. So I can go ahead and say that the whole thing is less than e times 1 over 10, which is equal to e divided by 10. Now, notice that e is approximately 2.7. Therefore, e divided by 10 is a number less than 1. So I can say that the ratio 11 to the power of 10 divided by 10 to the power of 11 is less than 1. Therefore, I can say that 11 to the power of 10 is less than 10 to the power of 11. So this is the greater one. Great. So we are done with the first method. And now we can go ahead and talk about the second one. So in the second method, I'm going to start with substituting 10 to the power of 11 with A and substituting 11 to the power of 10 with B. And now notice that uh, to get rid of the powers, we can take the log of both sides. And actually, I'm going to take the log of both sides with base E. Remember that log X with base E equals ln X. So what I want to do is to take the ln of both sides. So if I do that, I'm going to have ln A equals ln 10 to the power of 11, which means that ln A equals 11 times ln of 10. And if I do the same thing with this one, I'm going to have ln b equals ln of 11 to the power of 10, which means that ln b equals 10 times ln of 11. Now, what I want to do here is to compare ln a with ln b instead of comparing a and b. Because let's say ln a is greater than ln b then we can say that A is greater than B. And this goes both ways because ln is an increasing function. Anyway, if this is true, if this was true, we could have said that 
11 times ln 10, which is ln of a, is greater than 10 times ln of 11, which is ln b. And then by dividing both sides by 10 times 11, we could have said that ln 10 divided by 10 is greater than ln 11 divided by 11. And the beautiful part is that we can do all of this backwards. So if we had this, we could have said that this is true, and then this is true, and then this is true. So instead of comparing A and B, we can compare ln 10 divided by 10 with ln 11 divided by 11. So for that purpose, we need to do something. We need to consider the function y equals ln x divided by x. So we need to talk about this function, and we need to use calculus for that. So first of all, let's go ahead and differentiate this. So we're going to have y prime equals the derivative of this quotient. So we need to use the quotient rule. So we're going to have the derivative of the top, which is 1 over x times the bottom, x, minus the derivative of the bottom, which is 1, times the function on the top, which is ln x, divided by the bottom squared, which is x squared. Obviously, this simplifies to 1 minus ln x divided by x squared. Now, by using the derivative of a function, we can figure out where the function is increasing and where it is decreasing. So first of all, we need to find the critical point of the function. And we can do that by setting the derivative equal to 0. So if y prime equals 0, we're going to have 1 minus ln x divided by x squared equals 0, which means that 1 minus ln x equals 0, which means that ln x equals 1, which means that x equals e. So x equals e is the critical point of our function, and the derivative was 1 minus ln x divided by x squared. So let's go ahead and use these two to form a table. So we're going to have three rows, one for x values, one for the values of y prime, and one for the values of y. And this is our critical point here. And we have the positive infinity here and the negative infinity here. Now, let's say that x is greater than e. That will mean that ln x is greater than 1. And from that, we're going to have 1 minus ln x is less than 0, which means that y prime is going to be less than 0. So if x is greater than e, this is going to be negative. But if x is less than e, we're going to have ln x is less than 1, which means that 1 minus ln x is going to be positive, which means that y prime is going to be positive. So this is going to be positive. And that means that y is going to be increasing where the x values is less than e, and it is decreasing where the x values is greater than e, which means that we're going to have a maximum value at x equals e, but that really doesn't matter because what matters for us is this part. It says that if x is greater than e, our function is going to be decreasing. So if x is greater than e, y equals ln x divided by x is decreasing. Now, notice that 10 is less than 11, and e is less than both of them. So since our function is decreasing, we can say that the value of the function at x equals 10 is greater than the value of the function at x equals 11 which means that ln 10 divided by 10 is greater than ln 11 divided by 11. So we can multiply both sides by 10 times 11. So we're going to have 11 times ln 10 
is greater than 10 times ln 11. Remember that this is ln a and this is ln of b. So ln of a is greater than ln of b, which means that a is greater than b because ln is an increasing function, which means that 10 to the power of 11 is greater than 11 to the power of 10. And generally, we can say that x to the power of x plus 1 is always greater than x plus 1 to the power of x if x is greater than e. So this is the general result from our function. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching this video. Please consider subscribing for more contents like this and hit the like button if you enjoy watching this. Hopefully I will see you later. Goodbye for now.